Hello and welcome to another video. I hope everyone has had a, a wonderful Easter. And let's get started with a new character. Our 10th Monarch's Journey character. It's King Hethum of Armenia. His tasks are to control 8 provinces, double the current amount. To have a 9 Mongols with 60 plus opinion of... Well, any character of our featured ruler dynasty that we are playing, not necessarily our current character, and also to uh, rule independently for 75 years. All of these tasks are uh, to be done with the ruler's dynasty, not necessarily our current character, and that is good because we are in a bit of a horrible place. We have 3.64k troops and our one neighbor that is, well, the same size as us, still has a significantly larger army. We do s find ourselves looking over the sea at a Cyprus that is very tempting to attack. So we'll start fabricating a claim on that. And there is also the Fedayeen which is slightly uh, weaker than us by appearances. But those appearances are very deceiving as they uh, will just you know hire themselves being a holy order. And then they'll have more troops than we do. So. Yeah, we're not touching them either, at least not until somebody else tries to attack them. And then if that happens, we'll uh, try to snipe that county. Anyway, that is our situation in terms of territory. We are screwed and uh, have to make the most of things. We are going to break this betrothal because that woman just had a claim on uh, Ar Armenia and no significant alliances would come from that. Instead, we'll find someone else that is not going to be one of the Borjigins, as uh, the Mongol Empire is more interested in conquering than forming alliances. Let's uh, see how powerful Epirus is. They have 9k troops, that is a decent amount, so let's try to uh, get an alliance going with them. Let's also, of course, pick a plot. We'll go for the war focus this time, as uh, we want to have as many troops as possible, so that we can at least accomplish something, hopefully. And let's also set up these laws, and then change our society, or rather, join a society. And uh, let's get started. Well, as soon as I unpause the game, this happens. We are being declared war upon by our Turkish neighbor, who has quite a bit of a, a larger army than we do. Let's uh, see if we can call in some help. We will uh, offer an alliance, and they are not interested in any of that. So let's try swaying him, but for now, we are on our own. Fortunately for us, we do have, uh, well, hills, mountains, mountains, and one plains, and also plenty of rivers. So we should be able to just uh, outsmart the AI by uh, making use of the terrain, and then we can hopefully still beat their army. All right, so our first battle has begun. We have the terrain advantage, and that got us our victory. So at least this first war should be uh, easy enough for us to win with this first victory. And that'll get us some gold to get started on, well, probably building things, as uh, we don't have any claims yet, so there's not much of a point in getting mercenaries for our preferred targets. And uh, holy warring the Muslims seems like a great way to get ourselves killed. Okay, with a little bit of swaying, the uh, despot of Epirus now likes us enough to be able to form an alliance with him. But uh, he's currently at war with Venice, and we don't want to get pulled into that, so we'll uh, wait with offering an alliance until that's done. There's also a crusade for Egypt happening, so hopefully we can uh, use that as a distraction uh, and take some land from Egypt. Or possibly we'll even find their entire kingdom disappearing, as uh, well, they don't have any other kingdom titles, so if the crusade succeeds... A lot of stuff is going to end up being independent, and then we can start pressing the Jure claims over here, as we do have those as King of Armenia. Before all that, though, we do need to win this war we are currently defending in. And uh, as it stands, I'd rather not attack them, as that would basically be making the same mistake that they made earlier, as then we'll be going over the river and into the hills. So we'll just wait until they move out of this county. So uh, 
France is accidentally helping us due to Rome having joined to defend Egypt in the Crusades. And, uh, well, we're being attacked by a vessel of Rome, so the French army is now helping us crush that army. And with that, I think uh, we'll just need to lift the siege and we'll have won the war. Oh, not quite. We are at 98%. But I think we can uh, already dismiss the troops and uh, we'll be at 100% in a moment due to controlling all of the territory. And there we go. Right, so let's get that piece. Now we were also told by our society to go on a pilgrimage. So let's go ahead and start that. Or oh, we can go to where the Ark of the Covenant lies. And uh, let's see, how many troops do they have? They have 24,000 troops, that is a lot. However, these uh, Fedekin, they have a lot less. Now they do still have more than us, but they are currently involved in a war against Jerusalem. And uh, that means their troops might not be at home, and it is a mountain territory, so if we get there first, it'll be very hard for them to get rid of us. So we'll just try to... Uh, get that land and hopefully when uh, we are done taking a land from the Fedayeen we can continue and uh, press some de jure claims on hopefully stuff that isn't going to be independent. And the Crusaders are already victorious. We haven't even gotten more than just the castle occupied here. But this is good news. Of course, we can't holy war as that would lead to, uh, well, everyone in the region uniting against us most likely. But uh, we are going to be pressing a lot of de jure claims once we are done with this. Although maybe not that many as they do have, well, compared to us at least, very significant armies. So we'll still need to be careful. But still, this is uh, probably good news for us. And it would appear that the Fedayeen are willing to surrender to us, so we have managed to gain our first extra county. Let's disband our troops and start proselytizing in it, and let's see, we have 2.60k, and Edessa has less than that. So let's go ahead and uh, press a de claim on uh, the uh, neighboring county of Eintab. Eintab, I don't know how to pronounce this. But either way, we're taking it. So uh, let us get our sixth county. In the meantime, we also got a claim on the county of Famagusta. So um, it's another route of expansion that has opened for us. Although just the de jure claims here on Edessa should ideally be enough. And who is this familiar name? Shajar al Dur of the Bahri dynasty. A uh, certain queen of Egypt in a, a different timeline but in this one she's just a Muslim courtier in the lands of Armenia it would appear let's just uh, let her have a stewardship education and continue this war the thing that's worth noting is that in the county of Adana there is the castle the barony of Adana which is not held by you at the start but uh, the first baron there doesn't have any uh, air, so it's e easy enough to change that, as I have just done. And uh, I'll get you a little bit more troops, quite a bit actually, since it is uh, somewhat upgraded. So, worth assassinating uh, the Count if he doesn't die of old age. And Shadjar al has become Midas touched. That is very nice for her. Sadly, I uh, don't think she's going to apply that to any kingdoms, but uh, perhaps she can help out my father in managing his county. And we have gotten our sixth county. Let's have a look at uh, how our southern Muslim neighbor is doing. He still has 6,500 troops. He's currently defending against uh, Antioch, which seems to be not doing so well. So uh, I don't think we'll be attacking uh, the Emir of Halab for now, which means we'll be at peace for a little bit. Or will we? I suppose we could try to get Cyprus. I was thinking we'd wait until we get another claim, but with a 6.47% yearly chance that can take quite a while. So let's just uh, go for it. Have enough fleets. Our father 
somehow has a uh, gigantic fleet of 104 ships. So uh, that naval invasion should be a no problem. Oh, and we can uh, steal the image of Edessa. I'd like to have another artifact, so let's go for that. While we are simultaneously planning to uh, invade Cyprus. Uh, we'll bribe the abbot, as we do want this to succeed. And then have our troops go over to Cyprus. It would appear that uh, due to them currently helping out Bulgaria in a war, uh, they don't even have their troops at home. So this should be an especially easy war for us to win. So Cyprus has surrendered, probably because they are simultaneously being attacked now by the Kingdom of Jerusalem. So we have ourselves another county. And uh, with that, let's get rid of one of our baronies. Now, uh, Edessa in the meantime, it does seem to want to take back the land we previously took from them. So we are going to have to defend that. Of course, we uh, will wait until they move out of this county before liberating it, because it's a mountain. And uh, we don't want to charge into that. So a little additional revolt happens for the same county that uh, Edessa was fighting over, but we have crushed that. And 94% uh, war score it shouldn't take too long, for we uh, have also won the actual war especially if we crush that army of theirs over there i believe we should have our 100 percent war score and then we can turn back around and attack them instead and that should get us the eighth and final county that we need in the meantime there is also a bunch of revolt stuff happening but even with those revolts these are still some fairly scarily large armies that they field and I believe we'll be better off just plucking away some little counties from the weaker realms here and after that we can always uh, try to push our luck once we have gotten our challenge done. So while we're fighting this war we uh, do find ourselves with quite a significant amount of gold and we also needed to make some mongol friends so let's put the gold we have to good use we're going to find some uh, not our culture group mongols uh, so we want to have them be in our diplomatic range greedy and well we already set it to not our culture group just to make sure that there's slightly less to scroll through and then we want to have the mongols want to sort by opinion so that the uh, ones that like us the most appear at the top of the list of mongols and then we're just going to uh, send some gifts and since we sorted for greedy ones each one uh, that we give a gift to will very much appreciate it and we should be able to uh, get plenty of them to uh, like us enough so let's see whether this works for getting our challenge completed that uh, barely cost us a quarter of our gold unfortunately we do not appear to have gotten this challenge done what is this we have plenty of mongols to like us enough what are you missing? Have good relations with Mongol 60 plus opinion rulers, their vessels, and our courtiers with Mongol culture counts. Some of them were rulers, so I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Well, I guess uh, perhaps this challenge is simply a little bit broken. We'll continue focusing on the other two while we figure out what's the deal with this one. Alright, so we have won a war. It should put us at the uh, 8 counties that we need. Let's also uh, make sure to hand this off so that we don't have too much in our domain. And there we go, not so little Armenia. Also, I have figured out what we need to do. We need to specifically have opinion with the uh, people uh, that are direct vessels of the Mongol Empire or courtiers of the Mongol Empire, not the uh, other Mongols. They all don't count. So that does limit the amount of uh, people that we can befriend for this. So we'll probably uh, have to get some character with uh, a seduction focus. 
and can just get a lot of people to like them through sheer sex appeal, I suppose. Uh, so we'll just be focusing on building up our power base so that we can stay independent until we have a character that just magically makes all the Mongols like them. Ah, we have reached our first 25 years of independence. Maybe a good time to talk about what we've been doing. Uh, first of all, we have uh, won a war against the Beta Bay of stuff. He declared war on us and we fought one battle and captured him in that battle. Secondly, we uh, took Aleppo from uh, Halab, so that's a thing. And lastly, and perhaps most interestingly, we uh, installed our wife as Queen of Epirus, although right now she seems to be having a little bit of a mess over here, so I don't know for how long that will last. And uh, currently we are fighting a war against Room. A holy war, because I was feeling daring, and we have a lot of alliances at the moment. Um, and we are going to try to take the Duchy of Anatolia off of Rum. So uh, that'll give us quite a bit more land. But the Empress thing is most interesting, I think, because hopefully, if we uh, actually inherit that, and our wife doesn't manage to lose all of it before she dies, then uh, that'll give us a uh, nice place away from all of the very hostile Muslims and that'll hopefully make us a little bit more secure in getting the uh, we will not submit challenge done. But for now we will uh, continue working on the alternative plan to complete that and just securing our location over here in Anatolia by taking more land and building up our power and thanks to a uh, lucky uh, battle, we have captured the enemy sultan and we have expanded our realm into the duchy of Anatolia. So at this point uh, we're actually starting to look slightly secure, I guess. At the very least we should be able to make a decent stand against Rum if they decide to go for us and we are also, uh, well, Right now we've lost a lot of troops, but in theory we should be about on par to the Nicene Empire, so uh, things are looking up for Armenia. So uh, right now it's a bit of a mess, so uh, before anything uh, explodes too much I think we're going to uh, try to get our friendships with Mongols going. So as we now know we need to uh, befriend, well, direct vessels of the Kagan or his courtiers, so we're going to be looking for greedy people in his court. Seem to be two of those, so let's go ahead and send him a gift and send this guy a gift. That should put us at three and then we're going to look at his vessels and um, well, uh, of course we do need to have the ones that are within our range and uh, start giving more gifts. So we are four, and we want to make sure that the leash of the character we select is, um, well, the Kagan. Um, so let's see, we are at Uzgan, and we're just going to go ahead and click through all of these. It's a little bit boring, but I guess this is just what we have to do to accomplish our goals. Oh, there's one. So that's number five. And there's a number six. And we'll just keep clicking for number seven. And uh, hopefully the ones that aren't Mongols count as well. That would mean that we just need two more, otherwise uh, we may have accidentally given some gold to people we didn't need to give gold to, but I have a suspicion that it does count because uh, I have a suspicion that our challenge is just completely broken. And let's see, yeah, we got gold. So um, yeah, we just need to find those people and uh, that's done. Okay, so with that over, let's get back to uh, the war I'm fighting. And uh, maybe we can beat this army, that would at least finish this war, that'd be good. Oh, and that sounded like uh, 
my wife just died, which means that our heir is now a king, and he doesn't even want an alliance with us. Okay, well, it shouldn't matter too much. And uh, we are winning this battle. I do fear we are going to be losing Cyprus, because I don't really see our army winning there. Perhaps we can surrender just to get rid of that war on the list. Well, can always take this back later. And with this we have seized Jerusalem. That's quite nice. I think, uh, yeah, we can form the Order of St. Anthony. We actually have enough gold for that. So we now have ourselves a holy order, which, uh, given all of this nonsense going on, I think we'll also immediately hire. And um, let's move our troops back home by just lowering and raising them as they are in stuff we just conquered and let's try to win these two wars we're still in. Well, with the help of the holy order that we have created, we have managed to defeat the enemies in the east and we are now beating the uh, enemies over here in the west and uh, well in combination with that holy order there is also the mongol empire having turned christian so i think uh, we're pretty safe at this point so hopefully that means we are all set to get our let's see 39 more years of independence without too uh, much trouble and uh, perhaps in the meantime we'll manage to expand armenia a little bit further although that mongol empire surrounding us does make it a little bit difficult to uh, do the fun stuff like reforming the Byzantine Empire but we'll see where we manage to go in the close to 40 years that we still have to play. Alright we have reached 50 years of independent rule so I think now would be a good time for a little update. We have uh, taken care of some of the smaller independent realms over here in the east meaning we have uh, united our western bit with our eastern bit and are currently uh, fighting a war for Al Najaf because, um, well, it's pretty much the only Muslim realm still nearby for us to target. We're currently defending in another war against one of the vassals of the Mongols. That seems to be a regular occurrence, but we've almost won that. And uh, our wife is uh, dealing with a civil war, which we have tried to help a bit in. So uh, she was losing. Before it was at like minus 80%, but well, we brought it back to minus 16%, but now we need to uh, take care of our own wars as well, because it would be silly to lose those. Uh, we did lose half of Cyprus and still haven't reclaimed that, but uh, it's not really a big deal. And uh, in the West, Epirus is not a part of our realm, despite our father and mother dying, because... Um, well, apparently our cousin decided to usurp it. We do have a strong claim though, so maybe once uh, all of these wars are done, we'll uh, head over and uh, take Epirus. It'll be nice to combine that with the uh, Bulgaria that our son will probably inherit from uh, our current character's wife. And uh, then we'll have a nice little uh, realm spanning both sides of the Bosphorus, but not quite at the narrowest point. Um, either way, we'll just uh, win these wars we're currently fighting, and then we'll take Epirus, and then uh, probably have some difficulties expanding further, because, uh, yeah, the Mongols are huge, so we're not going to be uh, poking that hornet's nest. We have advanced six years, and... Uh, Epirus is now ours, so that is good. Uh, we are now the king of Armenia and Epirus. So, yeah, Armenia is looking pretty good. We also managed to steal a nail of the True Cross, so we are uh, making a nice collection of relics over here. And fortunately, we won't be able to take any more of Jerusalem as. Um, that has been integrated into the Mongol Empire courtesy of the Sunni Caliph who does still exist as a vassal of the Orthodox Mongol Empire. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. So I think uh, we'll probably be 
well helping our wife out with her little war over here and then uh, take Limisol as we did get a claim on that and then maybe we'll uh, expand a little bit more over here in the uh, middle of our realm the parts that we need to unify west and east well we seem to be suffering from a little revolt over here they do have over 8,000 troops which we can beat as we still had some mercenaries hired from before and we just in general have a fairly large army but it does mean that unfortunately we're going to have to abandon our wife to uh, her war to make Serbia a tributary state which means she will probably lose as Serbia is being supported by Venice which is not insignificant but uh, well not losing Armenia to some claimant is uh, a little bit more important than letting my wife get a bit more gold and we have won the civil war surprisingly enough um, our wife still seems to be doing okay in Serbia so we'll send our troops back west and try to uh, help her out again and hopefully uh, this dangerous faction is going to uh, trigger and we won't have another civil war in the meantime as that would be quite annoying to have in the final 15 years that we need to continue ruling independently and we have reached gold completing the third and final challenge for well let's say the head to me dynasty i do think we'll continue a little bit because i'm currently fighting a war to press a claim on akaya for a cousin so that should become a part of the realm and it would be nice to uh, finish that up and there we go 100% war score and so we have our reborn Armenia it's well let's be honest it's a bit of a mess it's complete border gore but uh, at least it is strong it is independent and uh, well with our son currently on the throne of Bulgaria it's a uh, basically a Byzantine Empire reborn we'll have a large chunk of the western part and a decent chunk of the eastern part just lacking a bit in Anatolia anyway that was it for the monarch's journey of King Hathum of Armenia I hope you have enjoyed it and uh, as right now there are no further monarch's journey characters uh, I don't know whether there will be more videos in this series. If not, then I hope you have enjoyed the series. And if there do end up being more characters, then of course I will make sure to make more videos. And uh, you'll be able to watch those when those come out. Until then, have a great time.